morning, everybody. I'm Stacy with Stacy's Organizing and Decorating for Life. I'm here to help you what? I'm here to help you organize your thoughts and decorate your perspectives. So today our topic is going to be about do we want sex or need sex? We're going to talk about conscious and unconscious choices and thoughts about that. So if you like that that's our topic today, they say sex sells. But anyway, if you like that that's our topic today, then please hit the like and subscribe button below if you haven't already. If you're coming back to this channel, as some do week after week, I sure do love and appreciate you and I want to thank you for being here first and foremost. But if you're new to this channel, I want to welcome you here and just to let you know, I am not a doctor, a psychologist, a psychiatrist scientist, any of those things, but I like those things and it's not uncommon for me to share upon what I learn about those things with you. If they help me, I think they might help you too. What I am is a life coach, but lately I've been thinking of myself really as a life midwife because what I do is I help people to grow and expand and accept and develop over life on life's terms, you know, to, to be able to be an acceptance of life on life's terms is when we remember that Things are just building our soul, building our trust muscles, building all kinds of muscles is that we get to continue to grow. So stay tuned, but I really want to go ahead and get into our topic today with no further ado at time because we want to talk about sex, right? What are our thoughts and perspectives on sex? And that's what this is, is it's not, you know, evidence based in facts because nothing really is when we look at it. I mean, because it just depends on what facts and evidence you're looking for because we're always going to find what we're looking for. Hence, conscious and unconscious, okay? So before we get too far along, I'm not going to be a, a, a jerk and make you watch this whole video acting like there's a right or wrong answer to this because there is not a right or wrong answer to this. Our needs and wants are valid. We're going to just talk about what's conscious and unconscious in my thoughts and perspectives and some of those that I've talked with because I ask friends about this because I have a friend... And this friend has been, um, you know, people seem to think that they might need sex, you know, and this friend might be offended in a way, flattered and offended at the same time that somebody might think that they need sex. So we're going to talk about the thoughts and perspectives on that because some people do. And, and as we go throughout life, whether, you know, you're married because sometimes our partners need or demand sex, you know, and sometimes when you're single, some people may think that you need sex, that you're not getting your needs met because you're single. So let's look at these things. If you've been curious, I've asked males and females, do you think that we need or want sex? You know, from one male perspective, he said, I think when we're younger, we think that we need sex, but as we get older, I think that we decide if we want sex. I ask a female who works in the mental health field, and she, you know, she's at a, a good, healthy sexual age, and you know, she expressed to me that she, you know, she wanted sex, you know, but that it it was an age thing about if we want or need sex, which made good sense too. And then I ask a friend also who has worked in the sex field, who was a sex worker, and. She had some interesting things to say, so I thank you all for your input, you know, and how you've helped me gather these thoughts and perspectives, and some of which I already had, you know, from my own experiences, too. So thank you all for being a part of this, you know. I've had heard many males say that they think that you need sex, you know, and, and there are scientific studies that they have to back these facts up. Like I say, we're going to find facts. I think that sex is good, so I'm not at all saying or being prude about sex. This isn't what this video is about at all. I'm just exploring different thoughts and perspectives about sex and how did we come up with where we're at now with the sex because sex can heal or hurt us, right? So, like everything else, so we're going to talk about that, okay? So please, again, hit the like and subscribe button below if you haven't already. Now, one thing that I think the pandemic has done is to raise our consciousness or not. People are either in fear or they're raising consciousness. So I have talked to friends, too, that said that, you know, because of the pandemic, they're being very mindful about what they put into their body, mind, and soul. And sex is a part of that. So here's the part in the neediness from my own perspective. 
if somebody is just putting their seed, juice, whatever, in you, that energy into you, and it's out of need, and it's like, I've just got to relieve stress. Well, what they're doing is they're giving you their stress, is, is in my opinion, is what's happening here. So for me, that doesn't work. I don't think that that's cool myself. That's not how, so this goes with the want part. So people may think that they need sex to relieve stress, and you might, but you could like please yourself in that area. So hence we come to my friend that's a sex worker. When someone says, male or female, because I believe this probably happens to male too, males too, I just don't think they talk as openly about it, or maybe they take people up on it. I don't know. I, I do believe that there are males that are, have a desire to be conscious sexually nowadays, you know, and so that they want to be mindful about where they're putting it, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm trying to be as cool with this as I can. So my sex worker friend, and getting her thoughts and perspectives as being somebody who received, she said, yes, it's very flattering. But at the same time, while it can be flattering, and, and I've had this experience too when, when people approached me, is that I think that people that approach you, that offer this service to you to help you relieve your sexual needs, that they think that they're trying to help you, but really they're coming from a projection of their own consciousness, that they may have a need for sex, but that doesn't mean that you have a need for sex, male or female, I'm saying. So if people have a need for sex, I would think that they're going to attract other people that have a need for sex. So you, we need to really stay conscious, as I talk about in many videos, about how we listen to people. And, and how people want to connect with people because some people just need to connect just for sex but some people want to connect not just for sex but for intimacy you see so there's a difference in the want and need to me so my friend that was a sex worker says that what this is is a projection when men think that we need or women think that we need sex you know and so the, the word need has many different meanings. So on my notes with her, she says sex based on the own that the woman can't take care of herself. See, when men think that women need sex or women think that men need sex, as we all know that we all have the capacity and the ability to take care of ourselves. Hence, if we're just stressed out in a conscious decision, and, and in male, like I said, males are getting more conscious about where they want to put it and females are getting more conscious about what they want to take. So, it's what consciously do I want to take? Do I want somebody expressing to me through intimacy, you know, the sexual part? And I think that this comes with age because as we're younger, our hormones or testosterone, like my other friend, the health worker said, our hormones and testosterone can play really interesting tricks on our mind and our hearts. We'll think we're in love when we're not. We'll think that somebody's into us when they just really want to, you know. So it's, you know, getting clear. And when we're conscious, but when we're unconsciously just staying in the moment, staying with those needs, because needs are expansive, you know, and we're going to talk about that more, okay? So, like I say, it may go both ways, that the woman and, or the man may feel this way, you know, but this, is, this comes, like I said, from the sex worker, is that, you know, thinking that a woman can't, or a man can't take care of themselves. So, if we're conscious, we may want to take care of ourselves rather than being injected or, or you know, having this, in, this intercourse back and forth of what we're, we're putting on ourselves, because... Back in the old days, back before birth control pills, I think that it was more thought about, maybe. I didn't live in those times, so I can't tell you for a fact that. But I think that maybe people had to be more conscious about where they were putting it because the fear of getting pregnant. So I think that with the, when we had birth control, is that the, that relieved that fear so people even became more unconscious about where they put it. But at the same time, on the other spectrum, People had to get married back in those days with sex. So, you know, a lot of things weren't conscious choices, you know, because in, even in some cultures today, people have to get married before they move out of the house. So that might determine the urgency for marriage, the urgency for sex. So 
It's very powerful. That's why we're talking about this today. And looking back at historically how we got to where we are today, and even in the pandemic, because in this creation of unconsciousness, just because birth control was created doesn't mean that people used it. So when it became okay to have sex and to express ourselves sexually, that some women got bent thinking that men got to do it and not have the consequences of getting pregnant. So then women turned around and, and you know were able to play tricks on their brain, their minds too. But sex isn't self-esteem. Sex is not self-esteem. But we may play minds, like I said, with our brain to do that. So part of the, the determining factors are the, the, the hormones and the testosterone in our youth, you know, and that, hold on, let me look at my notes. I'm trying to not put my glasses on and distract you. Okay, hold on. So it's not just what I was saying about the, the youth, but what I'm concerned with now is that we're stimulating, how are we stimulating ourselves individually, especially during these times, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, is I think that this all leads to one thing. And so sex can be powerful. You know, so it may affect any of those areas. Somebody may be attracted to somebody with money, so they think that having sex with them is, you know, going to bring them more. Some people may be attracted to people spiritually, which is, you know, more where I would be inclined to go. And so they're not going to think that they need sex. They're going to want to be more intimate, you know. So it's just what your preferences are. Do you want to be controlled by the money? Or do you want to be spiritual and maybe be an equal? That's what I think we all hope for in a spiritual connection, which can lead to the physical connection. So it's how are you stimulated? You know, what stimulates you? And what are you going into this with? What do you, are you going to exchange with this person? Because it's going to be an exchange physically, and it will affect us. And, and so many of us, I think, today are thinking consciously, how is this going to affect me? So... As financially, yes. Yeah. So that's where we get into conscious and unconscious sexual behaviors, if you know. Because when I was in my addiction, it was just about the power, you know. And so when I had sex then, it was a different different aspect. But I was younger, too. So we get into the whether you're in addiction or younger. And there is sexual addiction. There is sex addiction, as many people have struggled with. Any kind, When you struggle with one addiction, it's not uncommon to struggle with another addiction. You know, addictions and afflictions. So my thoughts is that the needing is unconscious and that wanting is more conscious because when we get clear on what we want see when we think we need something it seems like we're always needing hence we're going to attract others that are needing and when we need can we really fulfill another's desires you know that's my concern with this is can we really feel another person's desires by needing you know, now wanting can be the same thing because wanting and needing, when you look up the definitions, to need something means you must have it because it's necessary. And so there is, you know, medical backup that says that sex is good for you. And I do believe that it is. Conscious, though, is connecting with the right person for sex. And when we have a need for sex, maybe we're not consciously connecting if this makes sense. So making us needing ends up we end up needing more. And this happens in addiction. You know, whether you use drugs, sex, gambling, is there's never going to be enough. We have a saying, you know, in, in is that one is too many and a thousand is never enough because we have to learn to abstain, as some people may have to do that with sex. You wonder why people can have the lovely family and that they still want to seek out sex, you know, or and all of this, that people can seem to have it all, but seem to not be able to be faithful, seem to not be able to, to do this. And I'm not saying whether people, you know, I, I don't have any moral judgments on that. I'm just saying that this happens, you know, in sexual addiction, is that it, and that's an affliction, is that it, you know, all of our addictions are afflictions. So we end up needing more, and we want more. So when we get into conscious and unconscious, like when we work in our recovery, we learn that 
the obsession. For me, what I explain to people that I work with, the obsession is our mental you know, state to where we think that we have to have this. We need it. We think that we have to have it. And it may affect us physically. And drugs, it's going to affect some folks physically when they think that they need it, whether it be to pharmaceutical medicines or street drugs, whatever. There develops this psychological need in the body for this. And so people will, when they're, you know, detoxing because the drugs are toxic you know and when they're detoxing then they tend to crave it more so needing is a craving too I think that want for me when I dissect these things want is a desire needing is a craving so it's about the mental part when we get into the obsessive part of what we need you know and so we can obsess and so let me read my notes on this and I'm trying to be good to need something means yeah okay so I already read that and to want is more of a desire or a wish you know the words are closely related as need does pop up in the want definition I like to think you know that in maturity that it's more of a choice that we learn in our maturity to choose so this is all that this is about and choosing requires consciousness or unconsciousness because I know in our addictions, it doesn't seem like we choose. There's one part of our step work that says we made a decision. And to make an, a decision is to make a choice. You know, before that, sometimes we made, we made decisions not realizing we were making decisions because we felt we had no choice. We felt victimized of our own lives and our own needs. So as a want can be, too, a, a need or want when thought... Ab when thought about and processed, oftentimes we have a rationalization and justification. Sorry, I'm, I make these notes because it, it's like I won't even get points expressed that I meant to express and then I'll have to do another video and I'm trying to be mindful of both of our time because it is valuable. So, it, and attached is the word, you know, because what I said was that it's how we're attached to it, you know, it's that a rationalization or justification that's attached. So attachment is the word. You know, do we really need or want? And I've had to do this. We, I've had to do this in shopping because I'll think that I'll, I want something. And then I have to say, do I need it? Is it necessary? So it's a process. See, this keeps me out of the compulsion of buying it because we can get then go into the compulsion when we think that we need something. And even if we want something, we can get into the compulsion. The compulsion is the acting out of it, the actual going about it. So in addictions, we say, you know, that the obsession is in the mental part and the compulsion is in the physical part. How does it affect our life? You know, and if I compulsively shop and don't have the money, then that's going to affect my life. Then I'm going to be stressed out, you know, so... It, it affects our lives in many areas, our needs and our wants, but we're talking about sex, you know, so it's to be conscious. And like I said, so many people now were overpopulated because we were maybe not as conscious about our wants and our needs when having sex, especially the young people, because this gener relation, gener generation trauma, you know, intergenerational trauma. And so from you know the parts where the birth control came out and the freedom of all of that you know expanded and so we are overpopulated and I'm not saying it so it doesn't mean just because we had the birth control that people used it so I, like I said there's no right or wrong answers to this it's just to bring consciousness and awareness to how we got to where we're at and my thoughts so hold on so when we're acting out in our our powerlessness, which is our, our thoughts, that's the unman you know, that's the the unmanageability. I'm powerless and my life is unmanageable, you know, is that it the unmanageability comes out in the compulsion. So if I get powerless over my thoughts and I don't process them, then whatever I think that I need, I'll use and then there's gonna be consequences by my not thought, if that makes sense. So that same goes with sex, is oftentimes we end up, because of the sex in relationships that we weren't aligned with, you know, that really we didn't have things in common with because we didn't get to know the person. 
as in the days maybe back before there was, you know, so much sex. But I'm not saying people didn't have sex just because there wasn't birth control and that there weren't some un unconscious decisions. I just believe that people had more of a fear. And I'm not saying to be driven by fear either. So, do we really need or want, like I said, to process that, you know? So, I'm trying to finish this up. Hold on. So in the sex addiction, it's unconscious, right? Because we didn't process it, you know, maybe if we, you know, had sex and, and these pro these things developed, you know. It's, so it's very unconscious and it's disconnecting us from our feelings when we think that we want sex and we just give in to it without that process about do I really need it, you know. And so oftentimes, and it's a distraction to aid in the ego for feeling good for the desire, you know, for feeling good and satisfied. That's why we use sex. That's why we use drugs. That's why we use gambling. That's why we use food. That's why we have addictions is to make us feel good for feeling our feelings, the distractions from feeling our feelings in that process. Hence comes the need, right? Because we can develop that need physically and spiritually because the more food you give yourself, the more you're going to crave food. The more drugs you give yourself, the more drugs you're going to going to crave. The more sex, the more sex, the more gambling, the more money. It's just never going to be enough, like I was saying in, in the beginning. So this, I think, really became abused, you know, like I said. That's where the abuse of these things comes in. So the problem became the problem when we unconsciously did it, did these things, without asking ourselves, do I really need it or want it? You know, and I still have to ask myself in that story, do I really need this or want this? Because I want a lot of things, but do I need those things? Let's see. So to finish up, I hope that this has helped to raise your consciousness. I am on the last page of my notes. And so as many of us mature, because of the physical productions in our, of our sexual organs, you know, like the hormones and the testosterone starts going away, I think that that's where we start becoming more conscious because there's wisdom in age. See, it's funny, when we're younger, we think we know everything because we are grown in these physical bodies. But as we get older, we learn that we don't know that we're still learning about our physical bodies. Hence, when I, you know, practice the Reiki, is it, it's oftentimes that through the physical ailments that we get to look at the emotional problems and struggles that may have, you know, come on as the result of the physical ailments. And I've shared with you the book that Oprah Winfrey and Dr. Bruce Perry wrote about what happened to you rather than what's wrong. Because we systematically, in, you know, treat what is wrong with the, the drugs or the ailments there. But if we find out what happened to people, then it makes us more vulnerable to realize what happened to us too when we share on a, you know, consciously on a level and that vulnerability. You know, so if we can heal these things of the past, because when we look at what happened to you, we're gonna look at the past and realize where you come up with the thoughts and perspectives that you now have that have maybe affected your health. I'm not saying everything does because many of us believe in past soul agreements. We believe in past lives and some of these things could have been handed down, you know, genetically, but I do believe as we heal, we can heal genetically as well, you know, the future. So I believe that it's all in this quantum field. I, you know, there's so much expansion to the spiritual part of this, of how you know, that things can be, and it's not, we don't have to be perfect because we're continually growing, you know, so if we've done these things, as I have done too, those thoughts and perspectives that I needed to correct to make my life feel more freedom, more peace, that's what I help people find with their own lives too. So being a part of that quality instead of quantity, you know, instead of being in the addiction and affliction of wanting and needing more is that we understand the quality of things as we get older and the testosterone maybe isn't as much and the hormones maybe aren't as much that we really find a different way of connecting with each other and connection is more intimate okay so we're being present and not just fucking having sex you know just to be thinking it's out of need is that we're present, we're really attracted to this person, that what they say is in alignment with us, you know, and just just is what turns us on, 
rather than just looking at their physical self, you know, or thinking because somebody else wants them, I want them too, you know, those kind of things that drive the ego. So the ego is less conscious, is unconscious, and being present is more conscious, you know, and that comes more from the soul, and sometimes that soul connection can be quite a turn on, right? So, it's a, uh, yeah, so we look to achieve what we didn't know. Feeling good comes from the soul. So that's what I'm saying is that soul connection is that as we age, but I believe that people, that the young people are, you know, wiser than us in so many ways and that if we can merge ourselves and embrace each other, and that's what these videos are intended to do is to embrace all aspects and sides rather than to be divided. You know, so sex can't give us esteem. It can just create need. You know, we have to have the esteem first. And then, you know, we'll have the, the sex that, you know, is going to make us feel better, I believe. So, sex can fulfill a desire which allows us to understand what we really want. These are just my thoughts and perspectives, okay? So I want to wish you all a happy new year, and I hope that it's filled with cheer, whether you're abusing or not things, but I hope that you'll be safe whatever you do, you know. allow If you drink, you know, allow somebody to drive you. Thankfully, we have Ubers in much parts, many parts of the world now to where there's no excuse to drink and drive, y'all. So I want you to be safe and stay alive. Have a happy and blessed New Year's. Many blessings to you in 2022. And I wish you much love. Grinch does too. And peace. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share if you think it's going to help somebody else somewhere. Bye.